Now once you finish creating your chart, or in this case we created a couple of charts, we did an embedded chart here, and then we got a couple of charts that are dedicated to entire worksheets. If you want to change the chart type or options, meaning that for the chart type we don't want the column chart, we wanted the bar, so it's going horizontal now, you can do that. And also you can change the chart options, meaning like I want the title down at the bottom, and I also would like the legend over to the left-hand side, and I would like labels on the top of each of these uh, columns here, or maybe values. To do so, you need to go into the chart menu. As you can see here, we have no chart menu. The only way you're going to be able to pull up the chart menu is by actually clicking on the chart itself. Now that's only for the embedded. You see the chart menus there, I click off, it disappears. Because on the charts that are dedicated to entire worksheet here, the chart menu is always going to be there because, well, Excel assumes that's all you want to do because that's all you can do here. There's no cells to start typing in information. So if I go back here and I click on it and I get my chart menu, first thing I can do is change my chart type. Maybe I don't want it as a column chart, I want it as a bar chart. So I can select bar, select any option over here and click OK, it updates. I don't like it, it doesn't look that great, I'll click undo. The other thing is, is you can go into the chart menu, and these two are the most commonly used, the chart type and chart options. Of course, you can have your different source data. Instead of the source up here, you can have it on a different worksheet. You can change the location. But for right now, to keep it simple, we're going to just stick with the chart type and chart options. The next one is the chart options, and as you recall, in the wizard, you had all these tabs here that we just went over. So you can change the title, so maybe the chart title is going to be and then again, once I add it, give it a few seconds, it'll update the preview to see if that's something that looks good. You have the axis, or axes, and you can do categories, time scales, just like we talked about before. Grid lines, if you want some more lines than the ones you see here, major and minor. Also the legend, where you want it, maybe the corner, or at the left, or better yet, at the bottom. Your data labels, instead of hovering over these bars and getting the information, you can check these boxes and it'll add them. But boy, the only time I do that, I think, is on the actual chart sheets here. The sheets are dedicated to a chart because this thing's kind of small and it gets really bunched up. So I'm going to uncheck that. And then the data table, if you do want to show a data table, which can be very nice. And then click OK. Now, to make some minor changes here, like maybe for the Y axis, the value, or the X axis, the category axis, which we don't see here really because it's a table, but when you hover over it, it kind of gives you a little pop up. Instead of using this embedded chart, I'm going to go to one of these worksheets where it's a little bit bigger so we can see it. And it's the same concept. Whatever you do here is going to be the same concept that if you were doing the embedded chart as well. So, the first thing I want to do is, let's say we want to change the value access. In other words, maybe I don't like dollar signs, I don't want it in currency, I want a couple of decimal places. Basically, when in doubt, right-click and left-click on Format Access, and you get quite a few tabs. You've got the alignment here, and we'll do a few of these. I can click and drag this little dot and say I want it 36 degrees, the number's over here. The number tab, again, maybe I don't want it as custom here with the dollar sign. Maybe I would like it general. Next, click on the Font tab, and maybe I would like a color for all my numbers over there, maybe in red, and then also make it bold. How do I want to scale it? It has it at 100,000, which is the top, so it gives it just a little bit of room above my highest point on the chart. I can uncheck that, not have it done automatically, as you see there, and then type in something like 80,000, but it's going to cut off this point because it goes beyond 80,000, goes up to 90,000, but nonetheless, it gives me some control. And then Patterns. The major tick marks are over to the left-hand side. You see how they're going outside just a little bit? The major ones are the ones that actually have the labels next to it. So there's 80,000. That's a major tick mark. The minor tick marks are not showing right now. They're actually inside. You don't even see them. But I could go ahead and say I want them on the outside. Like, for example, between 60 and 70,000, you'll see all these little minor tick marks. So they're like incrementally showing you the next step from 60, 62,000, or 64,000, all the way up to 70. Then you can have the tick mark labels, which is next to the axis, or have no labels next to these tick marks. And then when you're finished, go ahead and click OK. Wow, I really messed this up. So it is at a 45 degree angle or such, and it's in red, and I'm glad we have the undo button. And the same thing goes down for the category or X axis. Right click and left click on format axis. You get the same tabs. Just go ahead and choose what you would like, and then click OK. A couple other things you can do 
is you can also right click. Now be careful when you right click because you've got two places to right click on here. You can right click in a blank area and you get this menu. If you right click on the little line here, it thinks you're trying to format the grid lines. So if I left click on format, I can choose my grid lines. Do I want it in color, maybe in red, and then click OK and they're all in red in any case. I get a few more options when I right click in a blank area and I can format the plot area by left clicking on it. And in this case, instead of having it in gray, which is fairly boring, I suppose, I can click on the fill effects, choose two colors. In other words, it's all about wowing people when you're using charts. I mean, what's the point using a chart if you don't want to wow somebody, right? So for two colors, let's do red and maybe a darker blue would be better. And then down below in my variants for shading styles, right now if I clicked OK, the top portion of this chart would be red and the bottom would be a dark blue. But if I did it from the corner, it looks like light's coming from the upper left-hand corner. That looks fancy. And I can also do pictures, but we'll click OK. We'll click OK. Oh, that's nice. It's like a nice sunset. And remember, you can change that and add and actually have a picture there. If you right-click, make sure you're not right-clicking on these little grid lines. And then left-click on for, for, Format Plot Area. Choose your fill effects. And you also have textures, patterns, pictures. So you can click on Select Picture and find a picture and throughout your computer somewhere and then click OK or click insert and then OK and then OK again and wow that looks great. So we're diving into the sunset with our numbers. We're looking really good. We're taking a trip to Hawaii. To make more changes here and you'll notice when you click on one of these bars here this is for a series and this series is purple for quarter total. So when I click on it you see a little square box there, a little square box here, here, here and here. Well if I right click it's going to change the whole series. And you can see it says Format Data Series. I can also do the same thing here. I can choose Fill Effects, do two colors. Uh, I guess purple's okay. And then down here, let's do it from the corner again. And this time, you see where dark purple's coming from the upper left-hand corner? We may want to change that. In fact, let's see where dark purple's coming from. There's dark purple, and we'll change this to white so it's switched around the other way. So now my white's coming from the upper left-hand corner. Click OK, click OK and it changes the whole series. So that looks great. I can also, if I want to add values to them, and you can see there's value when I hover over it, 23,700, I can right click and then left click on Format Data Series and you've got the rest of the tabs up here to help define that series. So you have the Access, Primary Access, or Plot on the Secondary Access. And basically what that means is, if you can tell, we're going up to 5,000 on these skinnier bars, but the big thick bars are actually plotting on the secondary axis, so it's going beyond the 10, 20,000 up to 90,000. So it's trying to define it by the thickness of the actual bar here. And what I'm going to do at this point is click OK so we can see the changes that we've made so far. A few more tabs that we want to cover when we right click and left click on our format data series, aside from, you know, selecting pretty colors, is the axis tab. This one by default primary just means you're operating off of the left value axis here with the numbers over here, but when you choose secondary, it'll add over to the right hand side additional numbers. And which axis do you go off of? Well, it only chooses the tallest bar, and what it does is it makes that the thickest one. So the tallest bar out of all of the series is the quarter total, and so it makes it fat, and it's saying anytime you look at this fat series, the quarter total, look to the right hand side, and these are the values you're using. Everything else, which is all skinny, look to the left-hand side because the tallest one is 90,000. And these skinny ones, well, you look to left 10,000. Even the tallest one in the uh, Doug series is over to the 30,000. So if I click Cancel, again, over here, it's operating off of the 30,000. Even when I hover over Doug, it's 30,200. So right-click, Format. Next is the Y error bars. In other words, do you want to imagine how much more you would make? Well, you can do that. You can say, look, how much more would we have made if we said the fixed value was 10,000? And it'll put a little bar just above by 10,000. Or you can do it by a percentage, maybe it's 10%. Or you can say, how much, what if we lost 10%? Or how much shorter would the bars be? Let's do both, a plus and a minus. And let's do it at 10%, click OK. And you can see here, if we had an additional 10% in value, I'm going to hover over this 90,000, we'd almost be up to 100,000. If we lost 10% of 90,000, well, we'd be down just a little bit lower here. Now, you want to be careful where you right-click on, because if you right-click here, you see how it selects the error bars? Well, if you want to format the error bars, okay. But I'm going to right-click down here where it's a little bit safer on the bar and go back to the Format Data Series. 
Now by checking these boxes, I'm going to put a label just above each bar in the series. So I check the values, it'll put a value for this, I think it was 90,200, and go all the way down through the quarter total series. Now instead of doing it right now, what I'd like to do and, and actually show you how to do is, what if I didn't want to put it for the whole series, a value on top of each one, but let's just say the highest one in the quarter total series, I just want the label here and not on every purple and white bar. Give me a second, we'll come back here and I'll show you how to select just the individual. It's really easy. Next is the series order and at the bottom is the quarter total and you can see it's at the bottom of the legend, also to the far right of each grouping here. If I click move up, it moves into closer towards the middle of the grouping and also moves it up in the legend. I'll move it down because that looks better. The options tab, you got two, the overlap and the gap width. For the overlap, that just basically means do you want these bars to overlap. So for example, if I type in 20 and hit the tab key, I don't know if you can see it, but they're overlapping down here. When I click OK, you can see the bars are overlapping each other. So what I'll do is I'll go back, right click and go back to format data series to show you the last one, which is the gap width. I'm going to change this back to zero here so they don't overlap. That's the gap in between each grouping, quarter four, quarter three, so in other words, if I go to a lower number, like let's say 20 and hit the tab key, you can see that the group takes up a whole lot of space here and you got no gap in between them. So I'm going to undo those. And like I said, I wanted to show you how to select one of these series. Click off in a blank area first. Now when you click on it, it selects the whole series, right? But if I click on it again, it just selects the individual bar here out of the series. So I can right click it and left click on format data point, not the series and you can see it's outlined or it's got these little handles just around it. And then in which case in this bar here I can say look I'd like the value and then click OK and it just puts the value up at the top of this bar out of the series of the quarter total. Now you want to be careful how you click. If you double click really fast you get this. You get the series and we don't want to do that. We want to left click once, give it a second and then left click again. And it outlines just that bar here so then I can right click and select format data point. Now once the label is up and I like that, in fact I want to get rid of these error bars so I'll right click, left click on format data series, go to the Y error bars and choose none. I can also format the label up here by left clicking on it and then right clicking and left click format data labels. Basically when in doubt right click you really can't go wrong here. And I can change the font if I can't see it maybe I want it something size 16 bold and for the color because of the background, maybe we'll do white and then click OK. All right, so it looks good here until it cuts off over to the right hand side, yes. So I can right click it and choose a smaller size, of course. Finally, before we close out here, I want to show you how to add a trend line. And a trend line just basically shows, like for maybe the series of Bart, he's a really kind of a dark burgundy here. Maybe we can have a trend line going up like this. Or what would really be contrasting would be actually the trend line for our quarter totals. And then finally, if you want to see the trend of how you're doing for your quarter totals or for Bart, Doug, or Carrie, all you have to do is go under the chart menu and then down to add trend line. Choose who you want to base the series on. Let's do quarter total. And I'm going to select linear. That's the easiest. And then click OK. And you can see the line. There's the trend line. Looks like we're doing good. Every quarter we keep improving. Click off. And then if you need to delete it, click back on and then click delete and it's done. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, as soon as I upload a new video, you'll be notified instantly. And you can do that by coming over here and clicking on my face. You can also click here to support me. So for $2 a month, you can have access to over 2,700 training videos, all ad free. And for a few bucks more, you can have access to my exercises, instructor notes, quizzes, certificate of completion, and a whole lot more.